it's not just Rockingham either, it's really the whole world because uh, Worcester Perth treats Perth, the world as the environs of Perth. So I get things from all over the world, I get stuff from every country you can imagine. I got sent pictures of someone who's claiming there's the worst building in Manhattan during the week. So Perth and the rest of the world are its suburbs. Um, it's a name's Andrew McDonald, um, blogger, um, comedian and photographer and sometimes I make hats as well. <laughs> now as I was saying, what I don't often do is humility. <clears throat> but I haven't got any whatsoever. <laughs> um, when Michael first asked me, I thought he said hubris. I said, yes, I love hubris. <laughs> hubris is fantastic. I said, no, when he finally said no, it was humility. I was a little bit, oh. Um, it, but there is a, actually a connection. Um, I first started off the Worst of Perth in, as pure spite. So it was actually a reaction to a lot of the, um, it was the print media and that sort of stuff when I started it off. Um, but it's become a lot more and a lot different. Uh, it's really become more of a tribute to the city than a hatred of it. And other people have, have uh, contacted me and said that they were going to start off the worst of Sydney and the worst of London and all that sort of stuff, but they don't really last for more than a few posts because you can't really be that negative for so long and the worst of Perth has been going uh, it's coming up to the eight years now <laughs> and you cannot really be so negative for six or seven days a week for seven or eight years so it has changed into something completely different um, so maybe hubris has come and bit me on the ass a bit after after all. Uh, the worst of Perth is really a tribute to the city disguised as criticism now and that's what it's become. So it's really about uh, giving people a chance to criticise it but also to discuss what the city is now. Um, there's almost um, there's been, let's see, millions of views. There's come out to nearly 3,000 posts. There's about 90,000 comments have been made on the site in, the, in, the, in these years. And there's almost 10,000 photos, I think, have been posted up. And almost all these photos are original photographs. So the Worcester Perth doesn't aggregate stuff. It doesn't usually link to other, um, it, it's not, other material that it's linked to. Most of the thousands of photos are uh, stuff that people have actually gone out and taken specifically for the site. So it's a lot of stuff that's the ephemera of the city. Um, and I think the time that the blog has been running, the city has absolutely totally transformed in these seven or eight years. When the blog started, there's a lot of all that stuff about Dullesville and big country town and people generally, just about everyone, talk the city down and it really has changed. It's a completely different place in this time. So I think it's going to be, for future historians, uh, it's going to be an interesting resource to look at back at this time, which I think is going to be seen as uh, almost as important in time of the development of the city as a, maybe the gold rush time before. I think it really is going to be looked on like that. So people will be able to look back and say, yes, they did have octopuses on their bus seats back in those days. <laughs> there was a Dennis Lilly. <laughs> and he did live on Beaufort Street. Um, there's a lot of um, heritage stuff on it. There's a lot of um, things that have gone uh, that are no longer with us and that the city really has changed in many, many ways. And there's a lot of stuff that's gone and uh, we regret that it's gone. And there's a lot of these sort of things. But some of these bigger things would be recorded anyway. Um, the worst of Perth is more of a heritage of small things, things that would never be recorded otherwise. And uh, a lot of the stuff no one would ever 
think to record, and now that's going to be uh, be there forever. Um, public art is a very big part of the site. Um, this one in particular, uh, this piece here used to be uh, just out here. It used to be in front of uh, the train station outside Forest Chase. Uh, sort of vandalised. Um, that good to start with, but uh, Lisa Scafidi, Lord Mayor, saw it on West of Perth, closed Wellington Street, got a crane in and took it out to the country. <laughs> <laughs> so it can be seen to be cleaning up the city one block of limestone at a time. <laughs> I kind of miss it now, I almost wish it was <laughs> back. Um, yeah, so public art. Architecture is also a very big thing. I get emails and uh, posts from all around the world. A lot of them are about architecture. Um, and I think in the, in the development of the city, architecture, the public and the corporate and the private uh, are still letting the side down a little bit for, uh, for this new Perth that we have. But the architecture could be 10 talks on its own. Um, as I said, it's, Worst of Perth is a, it's, a, it's a whole lot of things, a whole lot of different people. You can have some people like the comment stream, and as I say, there's been about 90,000 comments. Some people just come for the, for the comments and to that back and forth with that. Um, other people, as I say, there's occasionally quite serious discussions about architecture and design and there's a... Uh, People who d like or don't like their apostrophes in various places, there's a lot of that, it's a lot of talk on design and there's typography. Kerning, very big, very big <laughs> kerning site. <laughs> don't get me started on the kerning. Um, so these are the sort of things that, that are not going to be remembered when they're gone. Uh, that someone had this as their letterbox. <laughs> that someone had a wagon wheel and some bricks and decided to put them together. That someone's nephew's girlfriend had Corel Draw uh, <laughs> and got them to do the side of their moving van. These are things, that, some of these things are, are still with us and some are already gone. This one has actually uh, mercifully left us. Or that someone had a concrete flamingo, put a VHS recorder and had that as their letterbox. Uh, this shows its degeneration over the years. Um, they finally, I think, when they couldn't get the yellow pages into it, it, um, <laughs> <laughs> it finally fell over and I think that was a great shame that we don't have this one anymore. Um, now, oh, just going to go. As I was saying, it's really, really, uh, one of the things I like about it is that it's original content for the vast majority of the stuff. And I'm really grateful to all the people that have sent stuff in. I've still got thousands of photos um, that I haven't put up, mainly because they weren't funny enough. Um, the less funny the photo is, the more I have to write about it, um, which I don't like doing so much. Um, also have David, his journalist as well, who also posts. Uh, we have different philosophies on what goes up on West of Perth. I don't like people. Uh, I don't like people to be unhappy with what goes up. And he's a journalist, and he loves that. <laughs> so there is a little bit of tension in that. But um, that's, as I say, this, this is different things for different people for all the different parts of the parts of the um, site. Is it going on um, original content? I have a Twitter feed as well for West of Perth, but it's not connected in any way to the uh, blog. The Twitter feed is, is just pure satire. Um, I, want, I wanted to use things like Twitter as original content um, to generate original content. I don't put up saying here's the latest post or anything like that on it. I, I have it as a it's separate platform um, for uh, for straight satire. 
and these two here. It's amazing what people actually believe. People believe both of these. <laughs> someone, someone asked me for the research from that Edith Cowan actually was a man. Someone said, where was the reference that they could have a look at that? And someone also asked the same thing for the dissolving dolphins. So I think people, uh, people believe what they want to believe, I think. It comes out from this. It's, I knew, I knew Edith Cowan was a man. I knew it. <laughs> All of them, are, I believe, but there are a, rather a large number of them that actually had, have been believed. So that's part of being original content. It's, um, some of the best work is on the Twitter feed, you can follow it up. Now, that's about all I was going to talk about with West of Perth. Uh, what I really like to do is photography. Um, the photos of West of Perth are not, they don't have to be art photos, sometimes they are, but they don't have to be. But what if I had my choice to do, what I would lo love to do is travel and take photographs. Um, so, but I probably don't have time to talk about those too much, but I have gone, I've gone away from digital after many years of using digital. I started off as a film photographer and now I've gone back to film, so I um, go to film photographs and the phone. So I've gone away from um, digital entirely, dragged twin lens um, camera around the world. Um, so, but I'm happy to talk about photography maybe um, in depth with, with people afterwards. It's just a couple of my pictures. I'll get some in time. <laughs> now look, um, I've been watching a lot of these uh, talks, these Creative Morning talks, and I really thank, thank you guys for inviting me. I've been looking at a lot of them. A lot of them, um, particularly the US ones, there's a lot of talk about following your dream. Okay? Uh, I don't think anyone actually does that when they hear follow your dream. I think people like to be reassured that their dream is still available if they wanted to follow it, but they're not going to. Okay. So if I, if you <coughs> don't come and take any message away from uh, today, <coughs> don't follow your dream. Okay. I want to say to all of you, do not follow your dream. So I'm hoping that people will go and say, I will follow my dream. <laughs> you can't tell me I'm not going to follow my dream. I'm going to follow my dream just to spite him. Okay. Don't follow your dream. Thank you very much. Uh, what made you change uh, digital back to film? I think the digital cameras to me are just too good now. There's no... Um, because you don't know exactly what you're going to get with the film, that's what I like. Because sometimes you get what you don't expect, and sometimes that's better. Um, having digital and having to be able to see the back straight off, I think I found that I was not getting that. I think it's easier to take a good picture with digital now, but it's in some ways it's harder to take a really good picture or a great picture with digital. That's how I feel about it. Um, have you ever been sued? Uh, <laughs> no, which is maybe surprising. Um, I tend to stay away from people's businesses. Um, I don't, we don't do restaurant reviews or that type of thing um, because I don't get paid for it. So if I don't get paid for it, I don't want to be sued for it. Um, usually if someone doesn't like the post, I take it down. Uh, and David always says, boo. <laughs> uh, so no, I haven't been sued. A few people have said that they would prefer that the post are taken down and that they might sue if they did. I don't really think that they would be successful in anything that we've put up, but as I say, since I'm not getting any money for it, I'm not going to risk uh, being sued for it. Uh, there's a favourite post, I don't actually know. Um, there was a really, really fantastic painting of a uh, 
naked woman and looked at by an Alsatian, um, which was one of my favourites. Uh, so you can search for that. Uh, which is my favourite? What's your favourite one, Dave? All of mine, Andrew. All of his. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, none of which I showed here tonight. <laughs> uh, who's been most put out by a post? This is a person uh, in Fremantle that had a, was it a concrete truck. A concrete truck, and I think it'd been graffitied a lot of the time. And he wrote on it that to all my street art friends, oh, if I catch you, I will do something. I can't remember what it was. Some sort of violence to them. And he had that painted huge sign on his truck, and I put that up. And then they objected, saying, well, people might see that and attack our truck. <laughs> <laughs> but it's on your truck. You're driving it around, it's on your truck. So um, it didn't take that one down. So they were pretty upset, which is quite baffling, um, <laughs> since I thought that's what they wanted. Uh, why do I hate Paul Murray and the media in general? Well, the actually reason I started was to label um, Mr. Murray Australia's worst journalist. But I think, more well, seriously, um, the media stuff and people used to, when the Western Post started, be really, really passionate about the West Australian and how bad it was and what they didn't like about it. And now everything of that has changed. People just don't care now. As people get their news from everywhere else, they don't really, it's still terrible, but no one really cares because they can get the New Yorker or the Guardian online and look at it as well. So that is one of the really interesting things about it. No one really cares how bad the West is anymore. And that's one of the things I like. So um, I don't really hate the media in general, but no, I don't tend to read the news or anything much. The Post, obviously. Subiaco Post is one shining example <laughs> in a morass of Morley's, shall we say. Uh, some of the most popular posts have been, um, have been media posts uh, over the years. Um, what sort of things are most popular? I can't really think. Uh, People you yeah, really don't like an apostrophe where one shouldn't be. They really don't like that. And uh, I've, and I have popularised the the following of Kerning uh, quite a lot. No one knew what it was before, with a few exceptions. Um, do you regret the site's changing role from democracy to policy influencer? <laughs> no, no, I do not. <laughs> Uh, it has changed, and but I think it's a good thing. Everything has to change that goes on for so long, you know. And I keep thinking, I'll maybe Perth is fixed, and maybe I'll just stop. <laughs> but then someone will send something else, and so no, we still got a little way to go. Um, what else have we got? Following dreams can become a desire to have an impact on society. How does it feel knowing worst of Perth may be influencing Perth's culture? Yeah, that's pretty good, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Could you use worst of Perth to embrace cultural maturity? I don't know. What is that? <laughs> um, is that like humility? I'm not sure. <laughs> um, it does. I mean, it does have uh, influence, but it has influence on small things. I think people have changed their signage at when uh, their kerning has been criticised and then the next week come back they've got a new sign and so everything's spaced really nicely. So there is that sort of influence. With the public art, I mean, Perth, the stuff that comes out about the public art is, looks like criticism, but a lot of it is about how public art gets, um, gets done here. It's a little bit like the architecture. There's a lot of public art that gets done by the committees, the council committees, whereas in other parts of the world there's much more likelihood that they will let the artist do something and it could be something more outrageous, whereas here the stuff that gets commissioned tends to be battered down by all the committees and everything before it can 
so we do tend to get a bit of a lower common denominator with the public art, which is something that I really wish would change. Some of those bloody bronzes that are around the city, enough of that stuff. Um, but I don't know whether it should be, as I say, I have a few regrets of having that hideous sculpture moved to the country. <laughs> I'm still a little bit guilty about that. I don't know it needs to be anything more serious. I've thought about it. That it should be uh, sometimes to take a more serious look, but then, it's, then it wouldn't be the same thing. So um, I don't know if that answers the question or not. I will follow my dream just despite him. Good. Um, <laughs> but maybe I should also say, don't have the courage to uh, do the things you love either. Okay. Um, what else? I think that's about all of them. Which post got the most likes? Um, I think actually the one of uh, the red parrot, which is the shirt I've got on now, which is a uh, people that don't know, it's a. Uh, uh, a nightclub that used to be just uh, just down the road. Um, it's a lot of a lot of Western Perth is about nostalgia as well. So people were very nostalgic about that particular time in in the city where it was a uh, you know, quite famous nightclub. So I think that's had nice comments and likes over the years. People still come back to that that post and re-meeting people that they used to know when they used to go to those sort of places. Okay, I think that's about all. There's something essentially, essentially Perth in our worst of it. I think it is this relentless blue sky that we have here. <laughs> Enough of the endless good weather, day in, day out, blue sky, blue sky. When the people looking from around the world, I mean, that's a lot of the things they see. Everything, no matter how hideous, is this perfect weather every single day. <laughs> so I think that really annoys a lot of people. Um, the photography I do, I mean, I did do a little bit of uh, wedding photography stuff, but mostly it's just uh, photography for myself. Uh, comedy is different. You're doing it for an audience. For photography, I don't care what anyone else thinks about it. I just do what I like and I, what I feel works well. Um, where would I put that limestone sculpture? I put it right back there where it came from. <laughs> How dare they move that? <laughs> And I think, yeah, there should be tours, but I'm too lazy. Every year I think, oh, I should do something for Fringe, I should do something for festival, and then it comes around I haven't done it. So maybe one day I'll follow my dream. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs>